He's a San Antonio native who has taken his love of his community to a children's book. And in particular, one man named Fuja. And the, the children's book is called Fuja Singh Keeps Going. Uh, Simranjit Singh joins us live tonight for our KSAD Q&A. Thank you for staying up late with us. I, this is a man who's more than just a subject of a book for you. Yeah, that's right. He's a, he's a personal inspiration. You know, the first um, the first person to run a marathon at the age of 100. And actually, the day he crossed the finish line at 100 uh, was the day that I signed up for my first marathon. And so he's completely uh, changed my life. And I've spent a ton of time with him now. He's 109 years old now. And, and as much time as I've spent with him, I, I always keep gaining uh, more and more wisdom about how to live a good life. What inspired you to write this book? What was the reason and the purpose behind it? Um, you know, as a, as a kid growing up in San Antonio, um, I, I would look for books with characters who look like me and never, never came across any. And, and when I asked about that, I'd be told that, you know, our stories aren't relatable. And, and what that meant to me, the message that sent to me as a kid was uh, that our stories didn't matter, uh, that people didn't care about anyone who looked like us in our family. And so I, I promised myself uh, when I got older that I would change that. And, and so when my daughter was born about four years ago, that, that was the moment to me. I went back to those same bookshelves and realized nothing had changed. And so, and so I started to write the book. And we're showing some of the illustrations right now and Amazing some of the art. I mean, it is yeah. beautiful. Uh, I, you are a man who wears a turban. You have a beard. How often do people judge you by, you know, judge, since we're talking about a book, judge a book by its cover when it comes to you and think, oh, he, he's Muslim, you know, he, you know, and things like that. You are not. Right. That's right. I mean, I think, I think it's, it's normal for people to see me and make assumptions and uh, those assumptions tend to be negative. And, and so I've been dealing with that my whole life, you know, even, even growing up in San Antonio, uh, my first memories of dealing with racism came in elementary school. I was in uh, Thornton Elementary in the North Side District, um, and I remember some kids bullying me there. Um, we were, my, I have three brothers, we were big into sports, um, and so as we traveled around Texas for soccer and basketball, uh, we would run into things. So, I mean, it's, it's always been part of our experience, especially um, looking so different uh, with, with turbans on our heads. Uh, but that really, it, it really magnified after 9-11 uh, when people would see our turbans and our beards and our brown skin and associate us uh, with, with the enemy. And so after that, uh, life really changed. I was, I was a high school student. Uh, I was a senior in high school uh, when the terrorist attacks of 9-11 happened. And, and my life has completely changed since then. You mentioned that you experienced racism as early as elementary school. In terms of this book, what age range is it geared towards? Is it something that young kids should be exposed to uh, at a young age? I mentioned we were talking during the break. I have a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and a six-year-old. Is that something that they you think they would be interested in at that age? Yeah, exactly. So, so I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old as well. And, and, and so I was thinking a lot about them. Um, and their classmates uh, when, when I was writing this book. Uh, the book is intended for elementary age and preschool age. And, and really my thesis behind it is um, if we can teach our kids to see the humanity in people who look the most different from them, uh, then, then we can teach them to see the humanity in everyone they meet, every day, everywhere. And, and to me, that's, that's really part of my life mission um, is to help us all open our minds uh, and our hearts to, to connect with the people around us. That's what my parents taught me as kids. That's what I learned as a kid growing up in San Antonio. And I think it's just such a beautiful way to live in this world. It's so, it, you know, it, and you, you've broken your life's work, it seems to me, is breaking down these barriers and stereotypes that so many of us have. I hope I'm not being too presumptuous by, by saying that. I see this book as just an extension of that. You are a member of the Sikh community, which is usually largely misunderstood. Uh, it, are things getting better, do you think, than you know, 19 years ago on 9-11? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, in some ways, yes. Uh, in some ways, uh, there's more awareness um, and, and compassion for people of different backgrounds. Uh, on the other hand, as, as we're seeing, especially over the past four years, 
um, the intolerance and, and hate violence is, is at an all time high since 9-11. Um, hate crimes against uh, my community in particular. Uh, this past year, the FBI numbers were a 300% rise uh, against hate, hate violence against six. And, and we, it's not an anomaly. Uh, we're seeing that kind of rise in numbers for communities across the board. So that's why to me, this, this book is about a man who happens to share the same religious identity as me. Uh, but to me, it really has to be for, for our kids. It really has to be about every community and learning to connect with everyone all around us. To your knowledge, is your book one of one of a kind in the sense that it's the only <coughs> book that that um, deal deals with the sick community in, a, in, chi in terms of a, a childhood novel or are there more out there? And if not, is that the hope that there <coughs> is more someday? Yeah, it is, it's the first ever to to center a sick character from a major publisher. So it's with Penguin Random House. And my dream as a kid um, <laughs> growing up in San Antonio was I, I didn't just want to write a book. I wanted to have a book with people who look like me in the bookstores, in a Barnes and Noble, in, in our San Antonio public library system. Like if it wasn't that, then, then it would never get into our kids' hands. And so uh, yeah, it is the first of its kind in that sense. Um, there, there are a lot of others uh, that are with smaller imprints or, or privately published. But, but I, yeah, I just feel really grateful for this opportunity to help open up this space, um, both both for people in my community who will feel like their stories matter. I think about that with my daughter. I, I don't want anyone ever to tell her that her story doesn't matter or her family story doesn't matter. But I also think about it for all the other kids in our, in our communities who need to hear and learn about people who are different from them and, and learn how to see their humanity. That's just so important. Learn to see their humanity and the humanity in others. Simranjit Singh, I really appreciate you taking the time and staying up late with us. I know you're on the East Coast, so it's even, you know, we're pushing midnight here for you. So I'm glad, especially with the young kids, I'm glad you stayed up late with us. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Take care. We'll be right back.